A lot of nurses, for one reason or another, have to eventually leave the hands-on patient care side of medicine. This happens because running themselves into the ground, taking care of patients long-term, sometimes leave a nurse with a lot of unexpected and unforeseen anxiety. The shifts they work can impose a lot of serious stress on them and their families. For this reason, making the transition from nurse to nurse coder has rapidly become the in thing for nurses. A career in medical coding has become one incredible career progression that the nurses never even planned on. So it's easy to see why they have such a passion for the opportunity. As an LVN, LPN, or RN coder, the nurse coder would review a patient's chart in order to accurately understand exactly what happened on the operating table and why. Nurses come into play with healthcare cases that require intense knowledge of disease management and clinical intervention procedures. Because nurses have such a robust amount of disease and procedure knowledge, a great majority of nurse coders specialize in surgical coding and often work in surgical ambulatory type of settings. In other settings, nurse coders are needed to medically review the cases that require a deeper clinical knowledge and advanced critical thinking. These cases are triaged to the nurses from the coders for appropriate coding. The non-nurse coders also rely heavily on the nurse coders for extensive scrutiny of claims that have been denied. Because of their vast clinical knowledge, nurse coders are, are equipped to write indisputable letters of appeals and even refile appeals when necessary. The non-nurse coders triage complex clinical medical charts to the nurses. The nurses will research a variety of clinical sources in order to ensure accurate coding to include laboratory tests, radiological imaging studies, history and physicals, and the transcription of the physician's notes. Another big part of the nurse coding job is to provide ongoing documentation improvement education to the providers for proper coding. Nurse coders will also advocate for both patients and providers on medical coverage. They do this by consistently comparing their knowledge of healthcare policies to the physician's documentation. Doing this ensures the healthcare coverage meets for the necessary medical criteria needed in order to justify the medical necessity of a service that was provided. Nurse coders also play a key role in the auditing of denied claims. In other settings, the nurse coders are asked to go back behind the non-nurse coders and work as auditors to the coders to ensure accuracy before the claims go out the door. Another appealing factor for the nurse coders is that they are often placed in leadership roles. In a great majority of clinical settings, the medical billing and coding supervisors are almost always nurse coders. Remote nurse coders perform all of the same tasks previously mentioned, but these professionals work from home. They use secure internet connections to access all the patient records and the reports needed. Employers are highly attracted to nurse coders be because nurses already have established rapports or relationships with the physicians. They know how doctors think and so they know how to get along with them. Nurse coders also have the advantage of already knowing how to effectively communicate with the physicians, how to best communicate with them. As a matter of fact, you see it time and time again, anytime a physician has a question, they direct them to the nurse coders before the non-nurse coders. <laughs> Understandably, that's their natural inclination, simply because they know the nurses understand them and know their habits. The nurse coders also already are very familiar with what documentation should look like. And because they already have a built-in pharmacology knowledge base and an in-depth clinical understanding, the nurses bring that knowledge immediately to the table. For this reason, most coding entities have at least one nurse coder on staff. Now with all the changes in healthcare in the past few years, the coding industry is ever evolving. So job security for medical coders is very attractive. A lot of nurses think that they're gonna have to take a pay cut, but depending on what position and which company they actually work for, 
in a lot of cases, the nurse coders can actually make more income than a nurse. As per the recent stats released on March 22nd of 2021 from ZipRecruiter, the average annual pay for a nurse coder in the U.S. is $74,128 a year. That works out to be approximately $35.64 an hour. So basically $1,426 a week or $6,177 a month. Although non-nurse medical coders earn a median hourly salary of $27.50 an hour, according to the AAPC salary survey, nurse coders earn much more, as you can see. The website nurse.org indicates that the nurse medical coding managers earn $82,656 per year, while the nurse medical coding auditors earn about $94,000 a year. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, job opportunities for all medical records and health information technicians is expected to increase by 8% between the years 2021 and 2029, which is actually much faster than other industries. Okay, so this next slide is exciting. Check out the nurse coding opportunities on the screen. This was a quick copy-paste from the website Indeed.com. Pay special attention to the job titles listed. Also, check out the income portions. And look to see how many of them are remote coding opportunities. So as you can see, there are plenty and plenty of coding opportunities for nurses. So now that we've laid out all the highlights, it's also important to lay out all the warnings <laughs> because the truth is, the transition itself from nurse to coder isn't always so peachy. <laughs> I say this because it's the personal characteristics of a nurse that will truly dictate whether the transition from nurse to coder will be a smooth one or a rough one. <laughs> okay, so let me paint an image in your mind. Here we have nurse coder Eager Emma. Eager Emma is excited to learn. She keeps an open mind at all times and never hesitates to ask the non-nurse coders for help and direction. Because Eager Emma has no problem in being the new kid on the block and could care less about her ego, she blossoms into the most admired and respected team member of the entire department. It isn't long before the non-nurse coders turn to her for help and direction. Before they know it, the Revenue Cycle team is one giant happy family with all the team members pulling in the same harmonious direction. They hit and sometimes even exceed their month-end goals every single time. Pay increases and bonuses are rewarded to all team members alike and they lived happily ever after. But then we have nurse coder know-it-all Nancy. Little Miss Nancy believes all her nursing skills will transfer over to coding without a hitch. She begins to select codes from a pre-selected list of codes, but when the other coders try to warn her, she tells them she doesn't need anyone's help. Every time one of the coders try to tell Nancy that her codes aren't being supported by documentation, Nancy tells them, yes, but I know doctors, so I know what they mean when they document like this. And although the other coders try repeatedly to tell her, but if it's not documented, you can't code it, little Miss Know-It-All Nancy dismisses it because in her mind, she knows it all. Because of this behavior, division rapidly forms within the unit, and it isn't long before the members of the team get frustrated and very unmotivated. Needless to say, the team begins a downward spiral of missing their timely filing marks, their denied claims begin to pile up, and the number of appeals increase. Before they know it, the Revenue Cycle team is one giant contentious train wreck with the team members pulling in separate directions. They miss their month-end goals, there are no pay increases or bonuses, and they don't live happily ever after. Okay, so now that you know this can go one of two ways, my lovely nurses, I trust that you know which behavior to take on. <laughs> Now, in terms of what degrees or credentials do you need in order to make the transition from nurse to nurse coder, please note that right off the bat, you don't need any further degrees. 
You say, but what about the RIA and the RIT? Okay, let's cover that really quick. The RIA, the R-H-I-A, through a HEMA is the bachelor's degree. But if you're looking for the truth, here it goes. Please only pursue this degree if you are aspiring for a big leadership position. In other words, only get the RIA if your dream is to become one of the big guns who make executive decisions and run entire him or hit departments in hospital settings. As for the RIT, the associate's degree through AHIMA, this degree was more so for supervisory knowledge, but truthfully, this one isn't even worth getting into anymore because the truth is, over the years, this ended up not being very necessary. The RHIT or RIT is actually being phased out as we speak, so just never mind this one. The truth is, if you're a nurse and solely wish to be a nurse coder, don't pursue more degrees and instead go after the coding credentials. In order to make the transition from nursing to coding, the most powerful coding credentials these professionals can attain would be the CPC and CPMA or the CCS and CPMA. Now listen, a lot of nurses are interested in coding but get very put off because the medical courses they're looking at is going to make them repeat all the clinical courses they've already taken or they get put off because it's going to take way too long to complete the course or they get put off because the coding courses cost four thousand dollars look if you're a nurse and all you want to do is transition from nurse to nurse coder Please don't do a HEMA or AAPC. Hmm? I say this because going either one of those routes is going to make you have to repeat all the modules that you've already taken and there's no need to spend all that time or all that money. Hmm. Take the course instead <laughs> from Medical Coding Academy and here's 10 reasons why. Number one. MCA is licensed through the Texas Workforce Commission. And by the way, all coding programs need to be licensed by their states. And before you ask, no, none of the coding schools are AAPC or AHIMA accredited. Neither of those organizations are accrediting agencies. Accreditation is reserved for major colleges in order to offer school loans and grants. Watch this video right here to learn more. Number two. No other school has more five-star testimonials on Google, Facebook, YouTube, and even the BBB. Number three, MCA's five-star go-to coders curriculums are known for cutting out all the fluff, which means you'll get a whole lot less information and get a whole lot more education. Number four, MCA graduates are highly esteemed by the employers of the industry. As a matter of fact, many companies hire only MCA graduates. Number five, MCA is the only medical coding program that actually ships you real tangible learning materials, 10 of them as a matter of fact, all included in your tuition. I want to emphasize this because most schools are making the students download a bunch of PDF files. Number six, MCA is the most affordable medical coding program in the industry at just $13.99 and yes, that includes all 10 of your course materials just mentioned. Number seven, MCA students finish our online programs in less than three months with many of them completing it in two months. Number eight, MCA students, the majority of them, passed our certification test on the first try. Number nine, the MCA online courses are movie studio recorded. You're going to see animations and graphics, everything on the screen constantly moving. I want to emphasize this because most schools make you self-teach yourself with a black and white PowerPoint or worse, hand you a bunch of audio files with no video. Shocking, I know. Number 10, take the course from MCA because the teacher yeah, that's me. <laughs> Her mission in life, or my mission in life, is to exceed every one of your expectations. Also, before I forget, be sure and watch this video right here. It's very important that you all get a sneak peek at what our online course is actually like. So click this video next. I can't wait to see what you think. Oh, and guess what? For direct access to me, 
And to see how all the current students are doing with the online course, click our GoToCoders forum link found in the description below. Ask to join, we'll let you in. Of course we will, we're a bunch of good people. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and drop a comment. If this video was not helpful for you, I understand. Just hit the thumbs up button three times and we'll see you next time. <laughs> God bless you all.